3D printing feels like it's everywhere today, from schools to hobbies garage to aerospace labs and manufacturing floors. But even though it's everywhere, the path here wasn't straight. It's a story of early breakthroughs, hype and disappointment, years of stagnation, and then all of a sudden, a company that nobody had ever heard of flipped the script and left the entire industry scrambling. Today we're going to cover how that happened, the history of 3D printing, where 3D printing began, the companies like MakerBot and Prusa that built it up, and why the market eventually flatlined and clones flooded everywhere the eye could see and how Bamboo stormed in with speed and money and maybe some geopolitical tailwinds that changed the desktop 3D printing world in just a few years. 3D printing began in the 1980s when Chuck Hall patented stereolithography and then founded 3D systems. These early machines cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and they were designed for labs and corporations. Home use wasn't even a consideration. Fast forward to the 2000s, the RipRap project founded by Adrian Bauer launched with the goal of creating self-replicating open source 3D printers. This project became the spark that made hobbyist 3D printing possible. Well, let's give it a start. We're going to start by making it open source. We're not going to charge people for this in any way at all. And there were two reasons for deciding to do this, uh, just in the same way, incidentally, as software like Linux and the Firefox web browser and so on is open source concept, I'm sure, with which you're all familiar. Um, two reasons, as I say, for doing this. Uh, a, a sort of high moral, rather pompous reason, really, and a very low practical one. Uh, the, the high moral reason is that it seemed to me when I started that this was potentially a very powerful technology and that a good way to make bad things happen with a powerful technology is to divide people into people who have it and people who don't and have to pay for it. Now, all right, I'd be in the first group, but even so, that seemed to me to be a bad idea. And the only way to prevent that happening is to give it to everybody. Second reason, the low practical reason, is that if you have a machine that can copy itself, you can't sell it. You only ever sell one. Following RipRap, small companies began to offer DIY kits that you could just build yourself. In the US, MakerBot's Thingomatic was released in 2009 and became one of the first widely sold hobbyist kits. The Ultimaker original kit followed in 2011, giving enthusiasts another accessible option. These early printers, they were crude, they were noisy, slow, and finicky, but for the first time, people could put a tiny miniature factory on their desk. To many, it felt like the Star Trek replicator had become a reality. MakerBot, founded in 2009, quickly became the face of the desktop 3D printing boom. In 2013, though, they sold to Stratus for $403 million. But after going closed source and chasing customer hype cycles, the community turned on them, and their printers were under-delivering, the reliability tanked, and by the mid-2010s, MakerBot had gone from a breakout success to a cautionary tale. The lesson learned, open communities matter, and hype without execution doesn't last. While MakerBot faced challenges, another RipRap veteran was quietly building something more lasting. Joseph Prusa from Prague founded Prusa Research in 2012. His approach was straightforward, build printers that just work, keep them open source, and let the community help improve them. It proved successful. By March 2016, Prusa Research had shipped roughly 500 printers a month, and by late 2017, that number had increased to around 4 to 5,000 per month. Production continued to grow as well. In 2022, Prusa produced over 101 thousand printers. And in 2023, they reached 122,745 units, shipping to 149 countries. Prusa became the trusted workhorse of the 3D printing community, valued for their reliability, safety, and consistency. Many small print farms ran rows of Mark IIs and Mark III models, not because they were flashy or cutting edge, but because they simply worked. But with that success came a downside. The popularity of the Prusa Mark II and Mark III and Mark III S led to a wave of cheap clones. Companies, mostly from China, began producing almost identical machines for much less money. These clones were often faster to market, they were cheaper to build, but not always better. Build quality varied, calibration was inconsistent, and customer support was limited at best. For customers, it seemed like a bargain, but the proliferation of low-quality machines also created market noise. It became harder for honest companies to stand out, innovation slowed, and the industry began to stagnate. This race to the bottom set the stage for someone to disrupt the market with a new approach, and this was exactly what Bamboo Lab would do. From around 2018 to 2021, desktop 3D printers mostly saw incremental updates, build volumes increased slightly, stepper drivers became quieter, and calibration features did improve somewhat, but the core experience hadn't changed much since like the mid-2010s. Printing speeds were still slow, automation remained limited, and software and firmware often required manual tweaking and felt clunky. 
For many outside of the hardcore enthusiast community, the 3D printing market seemed to have hit a wall. Progress was there, but it was incremental, and the earlier hype around 3D printing making a mainstream impact had largely plateaued. But in 2022, that would all change. A company out of Shenzhen called Bamboo Lab released a printer that felt not only like an upgrade, but a leap forward, the X1 Carbon. It came with features the competition simply didn't offer. A core XY motion system enabling very high speed prints, advanced sensors for bed leveling, vibration compensation, a filament print and failure detection system, an automatic material system, an AMS that allowed multicolor and multi-material printing, just right out of the box. It had a sleek enclosed design, giving it a professional consumer tech feel rather than the typical hobbyist kit aesthetic. For a community used to waiting hours for a Benchy to finish, the bamboo speed and polish were notable changes. Within months, their printers were generating significant attention in the 3D printing industry. However, Bamboo Labs' rise didn't just happen by chance. The company was founded by former DGI engineers. Experienced in scaling high-end consumer technology, their development was supported by an ecosystem designed to accelerate innovation. China's national 3D printing push. China had been prioritizing additive manufacturing for years. The Made in China 2025 initiative launched in 2015 targeted robotics, automation, aerospace, and 3D printing. By 2017, government guidelines set ambitious targets, a 30% annual growth for 3D printing, revenues exceeding 20 billion yuan by 2020, aiming to cultivate two to three globally competitive firms. Miao Wei, the Minister of Industry and Information Technology, said the plan is expected to fast-track China's transition from being a large manufacturer into a competitive global player. Universities supported the effort, training students in additive manufacturing. By 2025, 23 programs had been established, feeding a skilled workforce into the industry. Bamboo Lab benefited from this environment. They got access to local supply chains, R&D support, educational pipelines, and favorable policies to help accelerate their growth and innovation. Bamboo's rise rests on three pillars, technology, funding, and policy. Bamboo combined the core XY mechanics with advanced sensors, automation, integrated software, creating more than just a 3D printer. It became a full ecosystem. Features like the AMS, the bed leveling, the failure detection sensors, and Cloud Connect software set it apart from other desktop printers. And Bamboo had the financial resources to scale rapidly. Reports indicate 200 to 220 million dollars in revenue in 2023. Their Series B funding in October of 2023 included investors from all over, but the community picked up on one that stuck out: IDG Capital. IDG Capital is a large global investment firm, and briefly they drew attention when they appeared on a U.S. government list of entities linked to Chinese military organizations. But then they were later removed from that list. China's industrial strategy provided a supportive environment. The Made in 2025 initiative, the university programs in additive manufacturing, various industrial incentives allowed Bamboo to source parts locally, iterate quickly, and scale production efficiently. Together, these factors help explain how Bamboo Lab could advance consumer 3D printing significantly, deliver machines that felt revolutionary compared to the incremental developments in the preceding decade. Of course, nothing is perfect. Bamboo Lab's printers are more close than open source competitors like Prusa. Certain firmware updates and features require official authorization, limiting the ability to modify machines freely. Some functions also rely on cloud services whose servers are located in China, which has prompted privacy concern among some users. And while replacement parts are generally available, repairing or modifying a bamboo printer is not as straightforward as like an open source alternative due to the closed ecosystem and firmware restrictions. For users who value openness or institutions cautious about data privacy, these trade-offs are significant. In essence, bamboo prioritizes polish and automation and speed over community, flexibility, and modifiability. Also, it's important to remember Prusa didn't fall behind because their machines failed. The Mark III and the Mark III S remain reliable, consistent, and safe. The challenge was pace of innovation. For several years, the Mark III series only saw minor updates, which meant the user experience hadn't really changed significantly. Meanwhile, Bamboo Lab introduced a new level of speed, automation, user experience, features like the core XY mechanics, an automatic material handling system, advanced sensors, integrated software. These all made their printers faster, easier to use, 
and catching the attention of the 3D printing community. Prusa's strong position at the top of the market allowed competitors to push boundaries and rewrite expectations, showing that reliability alone wasn't enough to define the next era of consumer desktop 3D printers. The rise of Bamboo Lab hasn't just challenged Prusa, it has accelerated the entire 3D printing market. Prusa has responded. They've introduced improved automation, upgraded firmware. They have new hardware now to stay competitive with faster, more feature-rich printers. Other manufacturers have also gotten better. Creality has stepped up. They've released faster, more reliable machines, incorporating features such as an automatic bed leveling, the dual extrusion, automatic material handling, things like that. Customer expectations have shifted as well. Users now expect speed. They expect reliability and automation, integrated software, which has pushed all brands to improve their products. In effect, Bamboo's success has raised the bar for the entire desktop 3D printing industry, driving innovation and competition, helping to advance the technology available to both hobbyists and professionals. The story of 3D printing is cyclical. Breakthroughs, hype, stagnation, and then disruption. Prusa built its reputation on trust, reliability, and community-driven open-source innovation. Bamboo Lab entered later, brought speed, automation, and significant financial backing, allowing them to push consumer 3D printing in a new direction. Neither approach is without trade-offs. Prusa must continue to innovate to stay competitive while Bamboo faces scrutiny over closed ecosystems, reliance on cloud services, and investor connections. What is clear is that Bamboo Lab has accelerated the entire market, raising expectations for speed, automation, and user experience. In doing so, they have spurred innovation across the industry, making desktop 3D printing more capable, reliable, and accessible than ever before.